What's up, sports bettors? Let's go through some bets. There's a lot of games, a lot of college football plays, also some pretty some pretty good promos. So you can see Prize Picks has a discount on Caleb Williams. They also have a Flex Friday promo. So the way this Flex Friday promo works is basically, you know, any five picks you bet, if you lose, you get your money back up to 25 bucks. So they have a couple promos, and I say this all the time, but the easiest money, you know, you're going to make is these promos. Flex Friday, a risk-free bet of $20 on prize picks. What's better than that? And a lot of books have promos. It's not only prize picks, obviously. FanDuel has a 100% profit boost. So whatever you want to bet on, you can get double the odds. Friday profit boost. You know, for sports books, these promos are a, market, are a marketing cost. You know, for us, it's literally free money. So what we can do is we can just go through some plays. I'm not sure what's going on with um, Parlay Play because I can't get this site to load right now. Hopefully it's not just me. We had a win on Underdog Fantasy. So, you know, doing halfway, been a little bit of a rough run, but hopefully we can bounce back and hit some plays. But anyways, without further ado, let's kind of go into some bets. So maybe we start out um, on prize picks. So what we can do is let's go over here. Let's go to the fantasy optimizer and let's just see, you know, the hard part about this flex Friday promo is your bets have to be on Friday. Like we got to find bets for today. And obviously like most of college football, MLB, NFL, all that stuff isn't today. So regardless, we'll try to lock in some 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 bets and, you know, find some good plays. So luckily we do have the NHL, although the games are on Sunday, which is a little annoying. But you can see there are some pretty good plays on prize picks. So we can start out, you know, kind of looking at this Flex Friday promo. So the first play, Odds Jam is recommending this positive EV tool. All it's going to do is scan prize picks, point out value. So let's not play the discount for now. Let's just find some plays in this specific game. Um, is John Carlson over two and a half shots on goal? So we want to take the over. And again, prize pick strategy is, is pretty simple. Um, you know, this is a platform where they don't change your payout based on you selecting over versus under, right? Any two picks, any two damn picks you select on prize picks, NHL, whatever, you're always getting a 3x payout, right? Overs, unders, hockey, whatever. So it all just boils down to, you know, can you win a high enough percentage of your player props to be profitable? So if you go through the math behind prize picks, what you'll see is on prize picks, you have to win these prop bets 54.25% of the time. So long story short, you can win these over-unders correctly, you know, let's say 56% of the time. Literally, this is just prize picks payouts. Your ROI is going to be 12%. If you can win them 60% of the time, your ROI is going to be higher, 43%. So if you can win these over-unders correctly 60% of the time, your ROI is going to be, you know, whatever, you know, 43%. But that's not easy to do, right? We have to win 55% of our picks, only losing 45% of our picks to be profitable, you know, on prize picks. So the strategy, long story short, is pretty simple. You look at sports books, all the sports books here have John Carlson heavily favored to go over two and a half shots on goal. You have all these billion dollar companies, all these sports books telling you, hey, this guy's a lot more likely to go over as opposed to under. So that seems like a pretty good play to go with. However, what we do want to do is we need some more plays. So we have one really good play. Obviously, I follow a very data-driven approach. Some people, like if you don't want to play a certain bet, then, you know, you don't have to play the bet. But what we can do is we have our first play on prize picks. We can see, is there anything else on prize picks? Joe Burrow passing completions. But, but let's save that for after the Flex Friday because that's not going to qualify because the game's not today. So we got to go back here. WNBA, that's not going to work for us. But what we do have is Clayton Keller under three shots on goal. You can see FanDuel has his line at two and a half. The other sports books have his line lower. So it's like, okay, this seems like a good, you know, play to go with on the Coyotes. Horrible hockey team. Um, 
Okay. And then you can see we have a decent receptions play. So this is a college football play. So what we can do is we can just go here and we can take him under five and a half receptions. So now we have three picks, but on prize picks, we really want to find um, we really want to find a five pick flex play. But this play looks pretty good, right? Like if we go to the Fresno State game and we just take a look at the odds. So let's kind of pull it up right here. You know, Odds Jam is recommending we take the under five and a half. It's in yellow, a little lower of a win percentage. Again, you want the higher win percentage plays. Obviously, the play on Caleb Williams is going to be the best play on prize picks right now. You know, it's a discount because it all boils down. This whole platform boils down to, you know, what percentage of your picks can you win? But if you look at this, right, just following the data, I don't think I'm smarter than all these billion dollar sports books who have tons of engineers. They have better models like. So many people want to outmodel the sports books. It's like, how are you going to outmodel prize picks, a company with billions of dollars that has tons of full time engineers, way more money for data feeds? Like, it's not going to happen. The way you're going to beat them is you use data, you know, to get an advantage and you take advantage of the profitable promos. So you can see Royals, I mean, not a ton of books post college football player props, but you can see he's heavily favored to go under five and a half receptions. Prize picks will give us the same damn payout if we take him to go over or under. So we want to take his under because that's heavily favored. So now we have three picks, but that's not really going to cut it, right? We really need five. Um, but what we can do is we can take Dougie Hamilton. Here's another play that just popped up. You know, lines are always moving. So you'll especially notice in like the NHL. Um, so you just want to make sure – I'm not sure how this pairs together. Like you don't really want to take players on opposing teams both to go under and shot on goal. So we'll just take this play on Dougie Hamilton. But we still need a couple more picks. So what we could always do is what's nice about prize picks is we can just kind of exploit positive correlation. So what we can do is we can go over to like passing yards – and again, this bet is risk-free. If we lose, we get our money back. Like there's nothing better than that. Is if we go over here to prize picks, we can just see are there is there any value on any of these quarterbacks? So you can see like Cooper Legas, they have his line at 239 and a half. All the other books are a little lower, right? Typico, 231 half, DraftKings, Caesars, billion dollar companies, really good models, taking bets, moving around their lines, you know, based on where action's coming in. They have a line at 236 half. DraftKings has slightly different odds from state to state, which is why you see it twice. So a tiny bit of value on, you know, this guy to go under. And granted, I usually wouldn't, you know, take this play, but it also pairs pretty well with Jalen Royals under and receptions, right? On prize picks, they give you the same payout always, right? So you can exploit correlation, right? Essentially, we can, you know, get, we're taking a quarterback to go under and his receiver to go under. Obviously, those things pair well together. It would make no sense to take, you know, Royals under in receptions and then take, you know, his quarterback over in passing yards when you're getting the same payout. So we got some positive correlation there. So it's like, oh, okay, like that's nice. And again, this bet is risk-free. What's better than that? But we do need to find one more play. Rust over two shots on goal. So it's like, okay, here's the final play we can go with. Although, you know, players in the same game, you just, you know, you want to be a little, a little careful. Um, so what we could do is now we have four picks, but ideally we want one more. Is what we could go do is go back to like college football. Are there any touchdown plays? I mean, sometimes there's some good touchdown plays. Stuff like that. It doesn't look like today. There's just not a lot of lines up, which obviously kind of sucks for us because our bet needs to be, you know, for today. But maybe we go back to like the NHL shots on goal hits. I mean, there's a bunch of different plays we could go with, but let's just go back to college football. So we have him under in, you know, what we could do is take like another receiver under in receiving yards, but you're going to see prize picks adds in this payout shift, which reduces our, you know, correlation advantage. So I'm going to skip over that. You'll see this isn't the usual payout they give you for like a five pick flex play. 
usually you get a 10 X payout. So they're kind of screwing you, which is annoying, but you know, just kind of how it is. But anyways, maybe we can find something. I mean, let's find something real quickly. So we can look at like NHL, maybe saves. There's some value. I mean, we're just kind of hunting through the market, looking for anything where we can get a tiny bit of value. Again, I really want to bet this promo because, you know, so you can see they're still going to give us this reduced payout, which sucks, even if I take a completely random other pick. So if I put in like a soccer pick, they're still going to give me this reduced payout. So I don't really want to take this play on, you know, so I don't really want to take the quarterback. So everything I said about correlation just kind of goes down the drain. But what we can do is we can go back to college football passing yards and just be like, okay, where else can we get a little bit of value? Oh, shit. So here, look at this play. Logan Fifey. So let's take a look at him. Right? So he's the Fresno State quarterback. His line is at 248 half. FanDuel has him at 240, 229 and a half. I mean, that's a crazy discrepancy. If you use FanDuel and you use Fliff, what you could do is you could middle bet this, right? You could go over to FanDuel. I can't believe they're screwing up the line this bad. But you could go over to FanDuel, right? Go to passing props. Take him. Well, it looks like they just bumped it up to 241 and a half. Um, it was 229 and a half, but still like pretty big discrepancy in the market. Um, but anyways, what we can do is maybe take him, you know, under in passing yards and then let's just find some correlation. Hopefully they let us take like a Fresno state receiver under in receiving yards, get some positive correlation there. But again, they're going to add in this payout shift, which doesn't work well for us. So these payout shifts are kind of what screw you. So kind of struggling to, you know, find this last pick that we can go with. Um, so like we don't want to take John Carlson over in shots on goal. He plays for the Capitals. And then, you know, Brian Rust over in shots on goal who plays for the Penguins. They're on opposing teams. So if the Capitals have the puck more, John Carlson's more likely to go over, but, you know, Brian Rust is more likely to go under. So you'd rather take them in the opposite direction. Anyways, this is pretty frustrating. So what we could do is just take like, okay, let's just go here. Like the Memphis QB over and receiver over. But again, they may add in the, here they don't add in the payout shift. So they let us take advantage of the correlation here in the Memphis game. So this game's today. So what we can do is we can go back here. And we can see, is there a little more value on the over or the under? So we have Seth Hennigan. His line on all the sports books is kind of like 244 and a half, 246 and a half. So we'd rather bet the under. Prize picks has his line at 250 and a half. And then if we go over to receiving yards, let's just make sure we're getting something halfway decent on Rock Taylor. And we can take these plays in the in the same direction. So you can see here the books have him like 55 and a half, stuff like that. So under 62 and a half seems pretty good. Why are they adding in the payout shift now? So annoying. So you can see now they're going to add in the payout shift when we take both unders, but they won't if we take both overs, which makes no sense. So we really want to try to avoid those payout shifts. So ideally we can go over to like Pratt next. And if you look at Michael Pratt, his line is 241 and a half on prize picks. All the other books have him at 238 and a half. So are they going to do the same thing where they try to block us for correlation? We can take a look. So you can see they're going to add in the payout shift, which is absolute bullshit, but just kind of how it is. But what we can do as well is you can take both quarterbacks while well, they're going to add in the correlation again. So they're kind of screwing us here um, because they keep adding in these payout shifts, but whatever. We have four good picks. We need one more. I'm spending way too much time on this for this random, you know, this random play we're trying to get down. This random promo. So again, you don't want to take players on opposing teams both to go under together. So that play we're going to avoid. What we can do is we can take like Rust. So we already have John Carlson over in shots on goal. 
Um, damn, is there really nothing else that is out there? So Clayton Keller plus Jack Hughes under. So let's take a look at this. NHL combo props. So another thing we could do is we could take like, you know, if we're going to take John Carlson over in shots on goal, let's take a look at these player save lines. Just kind of in, um, you know, try to find some positive correlation, ideally in hockey. If we take a player over in shots on goal, like John Carlson, probably makes sense to try to find some value on the opposing goalie to go over and saves. But you can see there's not really any, there's not really any value. And then if you look at Dougie Hamilton, who's the Arizona goalie, Carroll, you know, whatever, his line is juiced towards the over. So we don't really want to take his under 29 half, right? You can see all the books have his over, you know, slightly favored, or they have his line a touch higher on some other books at 30 and a half. DraftKings Caesars have his over favored. So we don't really want to take him over. And then Dougie Hamilton under and shots on goal. So we can get rid of that. Or what we could do is we could take him to go over. And then maybe we get rid of this play on Dougie Hamilton and we go back to the player on the Coyotes who we could take over. Clayton Keller under three shots on goal. So this pairs nicely together, at least a little nicely, right? We're taking an Arizona player to go under in shots. So if the Devils have possession longer, Clayton Keller is more likely to go under in shots and their goalie is more likely if the Devils have possession of the puck longer, he's more likely to go over in saves. So this is our risk-free bet for Flex Friday. You're going to see they're only going to let me bet $25 max. So whatever, we'll go ahead. We'll throw it down, 25 bucks. You know, some of these plays, not, not you know, oh, this play so amazing, most amazing value because we were limited to betting on stuff for today. But luckily, we still have the Caleb Williams promo. So, and now we can bet on whatever we want. So Caleb Williams, they're discounting to 274 half. If you wanted to, you could middle bet this. So middle betting is, you know, a great strategy. Prize Picks has his line at 274 half. You can see where do other books have his line? If we just go back here, Prize Picks, it looks like some other books have his line at 306 and a half. So you could always middle bet this, right? Go over to underdog, you know, hit him under 306 half. You already got him over 274 half. You have this nice little 32 yard middle. If he has 275, to 306 passing yards, you're going to win both bets. And you got to remember, like, you know, Caleb Williams, he's not going to throw for 1,000 yards. He's not going to throw for zero yards. So, like, the yards around 300 are most likely most impactful. So 30 yards is a huge deal for a player if you wanted to middle bet this. I mean, the 30-yard discount is really solid on prize picks. So this is a no-brainer play we want to go with. Here's also a really good bet on – um. Fliff, I already locked it in. I gave this play out on Twitter, but, you know, if you want a good play to go with on Fliff, Fliff is, um, it's a nice sports book. It's available basically everywhere, but you can see in this fight, they have it at minus 125. So I included it in, you know, a little two leg parlay. All the other books have this around minus 150 and the under has been, lines have been ripping towards the under. I mean, you can see on every sports book, the lines just falling off a cliff, ripping towards the under. Look at this on DraftKings. Look at this line movement bouncing around between minus 135, minus 140, and now ripping down to minus 150. And what you could also do is you could arbitrage bet this. So this is also an arbitrage play. And um, so you can see it right here. Arbitrage is how I started sports betting. It's how I made my first 40 grand sports betting. It's a really good strategy. Um it's just essentially when these sports books get so out of sync, you can bet the over on one book, the under on another book, and make a risk-free profit. So I'll give you an example, right? We can go through this. It'll take two seconds. Is the over is plus one. Like there's such a big discrepancy between bet online. They have the over at plus 135. Fliff is minus 115. When these sports books get so out of sync with one another, you can bet the over on one book, the under on another book, and make a risk-free profit. So Fliff has a max bet size of $250. So I can go over to this arbitrage tool, right? And Fliff has a max bet size of 250. So if you wanted to arbitrage bet this, I personally didn't arbitrage bet this because it's clear Fliff is the one screwing up. 
right? Every other book has ripped this line way lower to like minus 150. Fliff is arbitrage to bet online, circa, pinnacle. Like this plays crazy good. It's clear that Fliff is screwing up. Whenever arbitrage exists, one of these bets has to be profitable. But if you wanted to arbitrage bet it, you go to this little calculator, right? Fliff has a max bet size of 250. So you can change around if you only want to bet 150 or whatever your bankroll supports. And this is going to tell us, hey, if you hedge on bet online and you bet the over plus 135, right? Whenever the plus number is bigger than the minus number, you have arbitrage. And it's going to tell us, yo, bet the over for 191 bucks and you'll make a risk-free 850. And I'm not saying that's like super glamorous. I always recommend rounding your, your numbers. So in this case, you know, round this to 190 or 192.50. I mean, just something not super weird, you know. And then you can kind of... And, and this takes two seconds to do, right? Like you just need multiple sports books. Whenever the plus number is bigger than the minus number for equal and opposite outcomes, you'll make a risk-free profit. So if the game goes over on bet online, you're up 190 times 1.35. You bet 190 bucks at plus 135 odds. You go up 257 on Fliff, you're down 250. Your net profit is 750, right? Or sorry, seven bucks, right? On the other hand, if it goes under, you lose $190. You bet the over on bet online at plus 135 for 190 bucks. You go down 190. On Fliff, you go up 250 times 100 over 125, 200 bucks. You make $10. So when you round your bet sizes, you're going to get slightly different profit based on, you know, if the fight goes over or under. But still, I mean, it's just risk free money for like 20 seconds of work. This isn't super complicated. Damn, this bet on Dougie Hamilton is really good. So here you can see FanDuel's arbitrage to prize picks. So this play on Dougie Hamilton is actually very good. So what we can do is we can start to build another prize pick slot. And I just kind of bounce around, right? I'll like bet these promos, like this discount on Caleb Williams, you know, flex Friday on prize picks. I lose this bet. I get my money back. Um, and then bounce back to the arbitrage tool, hit some arbitrage bets, make some risk-free money. I mean, like, not super complicated. So here's another one. You know, this one's actually a little better than the UFC one we went through between bet online and Fliff again. Fliff has a max si bet size of 250. Turn this into a risk-free $12. I mean, risk-free $12. Nothing easier than that, right? So if he goes over, so this is plus 110. And it just takes a second to get used to how the math works. So, right, we'd want to round our bet sizes to 240. We make a risk free $12. So, if he goes over on bet online, we're up 240 times 1.1. 1 .1. We lose 250 on Fliff. Our net profit is 14 bucks. If he goes under, we lose 240 here on Fliff. We bet 250 at, you know, plus 250 odds. Or, sorry, we bet 250 at plus 100. So, our profit's 250. We make 14 bucks or $10 no matter what. I mean, Literally free money. This would, this bet would take you 20 seconds to place. But anyways, let's go back here. And now we can kind of look at everything. So what we can do is we can just go back here. And there's a bunch of different fantasy sites. I don't even use them all. Maybe there's some better promos on other ones. I'm not sure. Um, but you can see all the sports books have Dougie Hamilton's line at, you know, two and a half. And um, we're getting under three and a half on prize picks. So what we can do is we can start looking for some bets for this promo. And sometimes it looks like, you know, the most random slip of all time. But, hey, if there's value, we're going to bet that. So let's take a look at Jackie Young. And let's look at her rebounds line, WNBA. Look at this. Underdog has her line at five and a half, another fantasy site. All the sports books have her line at five and a half, it looks like. You know, FanDuel has her at five and a half with the over favored. So we explained, like, on prize picks to be profitable if you break down the payouts, all you got to do is win your prop bets, just like Jackie Young over under five, right? If you can win these prop bets above 54.25% of the time, you're going to be profitable. So this play on Jackie Young is winning, a, you know, has a win rate above that. Underdog has her line higher. And then FanDuel has her line 
at five and a half and they have the over favored, right? You need to consider the juice. So if you take a look here, you know, they have our line at five and a half with the over favored. The over is juice to minus 120. The over is the favorite outcome. So not only does FanDuel have the line higher, this is a $10 billion company. You got to put some weight into their odds. They have a pretty good model. They're moving lines around based on where action's coming in. They know which customers make more money off them. They're not fucking stupid, right? I say this all the time. These books aren't dumb. FanDuel knows their most profitable, sharp customers. If they place a bet, you know, they know smart people are on that. They can move their lines. So they have the line at five and a half with the over favored. So it's like, okay, that's a no brainer. So we got another really good bet. Um, damn, here's an arbitrage bet between FanDuel and DraftKings. I mean, you could sit on your ass all day. I used to get home from work, sit on my ass all day, all night make these risk-free profits and they build up $10 here, $5 here, $10 here. It's just risk-free money. Can't complain with it. So anyways, let's go back here. We now have three really good props. WNBA promo Dougie Hamilton, but we're not done yet. So let's take a look at our boy, Mac Jones, who sucks. And we can take him under 30 and a half passing attempts. Hopefully they stick to the ground game because he sucks. And you can see they already bumped this line down to 30. So a little bit of the value goes away. So it's like, eh, maybe we skip that over for a sec. So we can go back here and we can just see like any other plays you want us on. So positive EV tool, Joe Burrow over and passing completions. All the sports books have is over heavily favored. Again, I follow a very data driven approach. If there's certain picks you don't like, it's like, just skip it, right? Like you don't have to take Burrow if you don't think he's going to go over 24 half. But finding value, finding plays with an edge, that's how you're going to win, right? Because if you're taking Burrow's under when every sports book is telling you he's a lot more likely to go over, like you're screwed. You'll never make money, right? Because you're just getting ripped off. Um, like it's very, it's 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 honestly crazy how um. Uh, how 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 fragmented this market is and how like different these sports books odds are right like for example take a look at who what's a good example um you know Ryan Tannehill to score a touchdown plus 750 Trevin Wesco plus 2600 to score a touchdown you know on FanDuel plus 1200 on Caesars they're literally not even giving you half the odds same thing with Fliff so like it's it's pretty simple. Like if you're getting ripped off and you're placing bets at plus 1070 when other bucks are offering plus 2600, like you're screwed. You're just getting ripped off, right? If you're placing bets at plus 315 when other bucks are offering plus 450 or plus 280 when other bucks are offering plus 450, like you're screwed. You're never going to make money. It's like trying to be a day trader if you have to buy Facebook at two times the price. How are you going to make money? You're not going to stand a chance. So anyways, finding value is like the core of sports betting and it's not hard to do. So we can take Burrow over in passing completions. All the books have is over heavily favored. That's a pick winning above 54.25% of the time. So it's good to go in a prize picks entry. And then what we can do is we can check out some of these touchdown lines. You know, is there anything else? We got some really good plays on prize picks. Okay. And we hit some of those hockey, hockey ones earlier. But you can see here, like Bijan Robinson, you know, he's favored to not score a touchdown. So if we wanted to take Bijan, we'd rather take his under as opposed to his over. Whereas for Joe Mixon, Joe Mixon, uh, he's a slight favorite to not score a touchdown on the books. So we kind of want to see heavy juice. And I don't care. Like a lot of the value oftentimes is on the under. I don't really care, you know, which side I'm going with, but if we take a look at cup and digs, so we can take a look at cup and digs. So let's take a look at Cooper cup. He's a, he's favored to not score a touchdown, right? Minus 160 on flip, minus 150 on hard rock, right? Heavily favored to not score a touchdown. Also lines have been moving in that Rams game. I don't know if it's on the cup you know, injury news. But if we go over to the Rams game, 
Lions have been moving towards them, moving towards them to go over in points. I'm not sure if this is all on Cooper Cup. But again, that's what's great about following the market is everything is reflected in the odds, right? Like all this shit, Cooper Cup's health, lineup changes, injuries, it's all priced into the market. These sports books move around lines. They're not dumb. You hear a lot of people say stuff like, oh, I'm hitting the under because, you know, um, because it's going to be snowing. It's like the lines already moved down. It's already reflected in the market. So you can see Diggs is favored to not score and also cup. So I'm already on Diggs. So maybe we skip over that play and it's like, okay, we have this play on Cooper cup under. So you'll see prize picks. I mean, they just absolutely hate me. I didn't even, I haven't even made that much money on prize picks, but they hit me with some pretty brutal limits. So here's what we got, you know, $5. And again, this is the benefit too of having multiple sports books, more sports books, more promos. It's also like you never know which books are going to have the highest betting limits, the best betting limits. So like Oklahoma State is one of my biggest bets of the weekend. Lines have been ripping towards them. You know, some books give you higher betting limits than others. It just kind of depends. So Cooper Cup heavily favored to not score a touchdown. But anyways... You know, and you can see lines have been moving towards Oklahoma State pretty aggressively. So if we go here to Oklahoma State, you'll see like, damn, they're a pretty big favorite. Or sorry, not favorite, but, you know, we got them plus 150 when I gave it out. Now they're all the way down to plus 122. So lines overall have been moving towards Oklahoma State, drifting towards them. They opened as like plus 155. Now they're down to plus 125. And I've explained this before, you know, tons of times, but like, you know, the reason good bets occur at certain times is like lineup changes, injuries, right? You look at like, you know, underdog fantasy, or that's not a good one to look at is if you look at like, you know, we're not in season, but like all this stuff, right? All these injury updates, stuff like that can significantly move around lines, player prop lines, right? If Giannis is sitting, that affects every other player on the Bucs. Damian Lillard probably going to be taking more shots. His points line has to go up. So, like, this whole market is super connected. Anyways, is parlay play still not loading? What the fuck? Sorry, an unexpected error occurred. So that's not fun. But anyways, what we can do is we can go back here. So we got some good plays down on prize picks. We can go over to underdog fantasy. So if you're just tuning in, prize picks, Caleb Williams discount, pretty good play. Prize picks, five pick flex play. All your plays have to be today for flex Friday. So I got five picks for Friday. And we can go over to underdog and take a look here. Ideally find some good esports bets. So let's go over to underdog. We can also take a look at Fliff. So like this play, right, we could arbitrage bet it. Hayden Hurst under two and a half receptions. You could arbitrage bet it with bet online, right? Hit his under, hit his over, make a risk-free profit. That's one option. But what you'll notice is it seems like Fliff is the one screwing up, right? All Every single sports book has Hurst favored to go under two and a half receptions, Right? You can look at all these books. You can pull up the line movements if you want. All these books have him favored to go under. Who knows? Maybe it's a lineup change, injury. You know, maybe the coach said, hey, we don't expect him to, you know, get a lot of targets this game. All that shit can move around the market. So what we can do is we can go here to the Panthers game. So plus 100 odds, if you think about it, like what is plus 100 odds? You know? It, it's like flipping a coin with a friend for a hundred bucks. You're betting a hundred to win a hundred in profit. You either win a hundred or you lose a hundred. So let's go over here. Let's pull up receptions. But in this case, the coin that we're flipping with our friend for a hundred bucks is weighted in our favor. Every sports book has the under favored, right? Except for Fliff. So it's kind of like finding a coin that is weighted to show up on your side. You know, the under is more likely than the over. So that play seems good. 
You can see lines moving lower in the Colts game. So you can lock it in. Again, it doesn't matter. Like if a bet is profitable, you could either play, you know, you could arbitrage bet this, make a risk-free profit. You could just bet the under on Fliff since it's clear they're screwing up. Again, I'm not saying this bet is a lock. It's not guaranteed to win. It's just a play with an edge. All these sports books, especially the sharp sports books like Bet Online and Pinnacle, they have him favored to go under, pretty heavy favorite to go under. So it's like a coin that's, you know, 53% to show up on heads. You know, the under is more likely, and we're getting it at plus 100 at an underdog price. It's like flipping a coin for 100 bucks with a friend if heads is the more likely outcome and you can pick heads. You wait a coin to show up on heads, you go flip it with people for 100 bucks, you're going to make a lot of money long term. And that's essentially what we got here. Right? So you can see Pinnacle has the, you know, bet on Pinnacle has the under only slightly favored. If you look at like a win, a no vig calculator, you know, their market, right? They obviously have the under favored if you take a look at it, but only very slightly, right? Minus 119 versus minus 111. So the under is a small favorite. So according to Pinnacle, right, the under is 51% to win, the over is 49%. Now, bet online, another really sharp sports book, they have the under a lot more favored, right? Minus 143, plus 110, minus 143. So they're saying, no, 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 the under is 55% to win. So again, depending on the action these books get, the, their models, like they all can have different lines from one another. And kind of as a sharp sports better, we're processing all that information to make good bets, to make the best possible betting opportunities. So another good play we could roll with um, if we wanted to throw it into a parlay is um, we could take Elliott over seven and a half rushing attempts. All the books have him heavily favored to go over. You can see lines moving towards is over. So again, because all these books, you know, set lines independently, they all also have to update odds, right? So whenever a player gets injured, all these books are setting lines independently. They have their own models. They all have to update odds independently, right? Whenever a player gets injured, sharp action comes in, whatever it is, which is, you know, why they kind of start to screw up. So why don't we make a little nice little parlay? So here it's like clear value on Zeke, right? Minus 125. So betting on, you know, platforms like Fliff is not super complicated. You just got to... Um, and Fluff is a great book to have just because it's legal everywhere. Whoa. So we also wanted to take Elliot over in rushing attempts at minus 125. So there we go. We got a nice little three-pick parlay. And now the profit margin is kind of lower. So you can always set your minimum profit margin to like 1% or something like that which why don't we do that, right? So you can see there's not a ton of bets available. I mean, there's there's some good bets, right? There's a fair amount of good bets. Of course, parlay play is not even loading, so I'm not going to be able to place a bet there. But here we have our three-pick parlay on Fliff. And you want to place things with Fliff cash. These Fliff coins, fake money, right? It's not real money. So you want to use Fliff cash. But anyways, we got three really good picks in a parlay. We could go through the math behind that parlay, but I think people will get bored. So let's just go here and we can go back to. So this play on Dougie Hamilton looks very good. A lot of arbitrage bets. Alexander Ovechkin shots on goal. Another arbitrage bet, this time between bet online and FanDuel. Hit the over on FanDuel, the under on bet online. Make a risk-free profit. In these risk-free profits, they're not glamorous when you're arbitrage betting. Oh, $4, $3. But it builds up quick, right? You hit 10 of these in an hour. That's 30 bucks, 100 bucks, whatever. It depends on your bankroll and you know, how quickly you can move to get down these plays. But anyways, let's go over to Underdog because their site actually works. And we can also pull up prize picks. And again, if you're just tuning in, here's the play we locked in on Prize Picks for Flex Friday. Here's the play for the discount. Prize Picks has me on very low betting limits, and then I just hit this three-pick parlay on Fliff. 
Again, more books, more profitable bets. FanDuel has an 100% profit boost, right? Which is crazy. You know, if you think about it, so if you use FanDuel, what you could do, as a simple example, here's another arbitrage bet. It's crazy. But as an example, if you use FanDuel, right, what you could do is when I started sports betting, what I did was I turned these, you know, profit boosts and shit like this, 100% profit boost, double the odds into, into risk-free profit. And I'll show you how to do that. So this is called the Odds Jam Low Holds tool. And all this tool does is, you know, show you bets where you're getting decent value on FanDuel. So you can just kind of pick something, right? So let's say this play, right? You just got to find two sports books you use. So if you don't use Fliff, you can always like filter it out of your hedge books. But what you can do is let's say, let's just go through a simple example. You know, Ball State. So Ball State is plus 720 on FanDuel. You can see they're giving you pretty good value. So we're going to get double the odds with our profit boost. So Ball State, and then we have Toledo. So if we bet them with the profit boost, and most people have these profit boosts for um, uh, most people, they let you bet for this profit boost 50 bucks. So instead of getting plus 720, we're going to be getting plus 1440 on FanDuel, and we can bet 50 bucks on this, right? This calculator is going to tell me, yo, go bet $680 on bet online, and you'll make a risk free profit of 40 bucks. Fucking insane. So bet online. And it's going to tell us to bet 680. Again, we want to round this arbitrage calculator. We're getting double the odds. And then this is minus 750. And you may get this profit boost for $20, $100. I'm not sure. So you can always just like change around your bet sizes. But let's say it's 50. I see most people getting 50. So we can make a risk-free profit of 40 bucks and 59 cents. So there's two outcomes right? FanDuel, bet online. One of these teams is going to win, right? These are equal and opposite outcomes. So this is how you want to think about sports betting. If Ball State wins, we lose 680 bucks on bet online, right? Toledo, the favored team lost, but on FanDuel, we go up 50 times 14.4, 720 bucks. Our net profit is 40. Now, if Toledo wins, we lose 50 bucks on FanDuel, and we go up 680 times 100 over 750, 91 bucks on bet online for a profit of 41 bucks. We make $40 no matter what happens. So you you got I mean, I mean, this promo is worth $40 risk free if you understand the strategy, right? The thing is, is you got to put in the work to understand the strategy because literally you can you could turn this into a risk free $40 for like 10 seconds of work. So it's crazy if you think about it. Risk-free $40 for 20 seconds of work. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. Damn. So, and I'm not even saying that's the best way to use a profit boost or like, oh, you have to use your profit boost like that. Not at all. You don't have to do shit. But um, so you can see lines are moving towards two uh, under two and a half passing touchdowns. So you can see hot streak. They have their odds in, you know, what's called decimal format, which is a little annoying, but 1.58 is the same as minus 172. I'm not sure why they do it, but um, let's go here. So I just kind of bounce around from all these platforms, sports book to sports book, make some money, call it a day. You can make some, you can make some risk-free money. You can do all sorts of things. So let's go back here. Let's go back to the arbitrage tool. And take a look here at what else is it recommending. So it has a Mary under half of it. I mean, look at this. They have this guy to score, to not score at minus 265. 
you can get this at minus it's minus 870 or minus like it's absolutely insane how messed up some of these sports books odds are so what we can do is we can just go here to Amari and I want to get rid of this pick and we want to take him not to score a touchdown again this is in decimal odds so if you just convert that over to normal odds you can see it's like you know regardless it's going to be really good taking his under here so we want to take both of these unders and they limited me recently just to a max bet size of 50 bucks so we can look at Tua what's annoying about this platform is they just move odds pretty quickly but anyways, you can go ahead and you can see they're like moving it on me right now. They keep changing the line. Um, but regardless, like here's a decent play we can go with. And we got some good looking plays, you know, for this weekend on Hot Streak. So we'll have to see how that turns out. So what else do we like? There's some plays on Jock Market, yada, yada. There's some plays on Parlay Play, but the site doesn't load. There we go. Now the site's loading. Also, they have this, uh, you know, $250 deposit bonus. I'm not sure why they're denying it. That I need to figure out. But again, the more books you have, the better. Sometimes there's a ton of profitable bets on parlay play. Sometimes there's jack shit. It just kind of depends on the day. Um, but you can see, like, you know, I'm up $5,000 profit. The sports book has a max bet size of $60, like, I don't have much to complain about. $5,000 profit, $60 bet sizes. It's not the most popular platform in the world. Oh, shit. But they have a... And you can't bet a lot of money, but they have... I mean, it's crazy. Like, look at this. CJ Stroud. His line is, um, you know, 220-ish on all these sports books. We're, like, creating our own discounts, our own Taco Tuesdays. All these other books have him at 224 and a half. They have him just casually at 244 and a half. It's like, yo, what are you guys doing? So that's obviously a play we want to lock in. And odds jam, you know, most of these bets suck. That's what you got to realize is like most of these bets suck. Odds jam is scanning through, you know, tens and tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of lines on every sports book to try to point out, yo, here are these few spots where a sports book is like really screwing up big time. So there's a lot of bets it looks like here and on um, underdog. So we'll have to take a look at underdog. Brianna Stewart points early WNBA value. Again, it doesn't really matter what sport you're betting on. The same concepts apply, you know, to betting on any any sport. Like, people always be like, does the data matter in the WNBA? It's like, you know, like when I was a trader, I traded all sorts of stocks, options. The concepts don't change. It's the same thing, right? It's all about finding value, following the data, getting an edge, not getting emotional. Same thing as a trader, same thing as a sports better. There's nothing super complicated about it. Um, because you're not going to win every bet on this platform. I've lost most of my bets because the optimal slip type is a six leg parlay. Damn. So Stafford, all the other books have him at like 275 and a half. Seth Hennigan, 252 and a half. This place for today. All the other books have him at 244 and a half. You know, it's just like, so. We want to take under, under, under. There we go. And then we can venture down a bit because why not? We have, I mean, the first pick is incredible, but you look at this headshot play, right? If we just want to take a quick look here, underdog has his line, or sorry, parlay play has his line at 20 and a half, 19 and a half is here. You want to consider the juice too. 18 and a half hot streak has him with the under favorite. Again, this is another platform that, you know, they give you the same payout if you take him to go over or under. So, of course, we want to take the under. That's the sharp bet with an edge. All the other books have his line at 19 and a half. Hot streak even has his line at 18 and a half. 
Not only do they have his line at 18 and a half, but they have the under favored, the under juiced. So it's like that's a no-brainer play, an absolute no-brainer play. So let's refresh this. Sometimes they have pretty good TD lines. Um, we can see, do they have anyone rushing TDs yet? Nah, no TD lines. Sometimes there's pretty good TD lines on parlay play, but it doesn't look like right now. So let's go back here. I thought there was more value, but maybe I'm wrong. I was pissed it wasn't, the site wasn't loading for me this morning. But they also have, I mean, again, like it's it's literally wild, but um, oh shit, there are some hockey bets. Latang under brat under. So again, like the strategy is the same. The strategy doesn't change, right? All sports books have this guy heavily favored to go under two and a half shots on goal. Pinnacle, sharpest bookmaker out there, right here. Whoops. They have them all the way down, you know, at whoops. They have them all the way down. Whoops. They have them all the way down at minus 154. Ripping his odds lower. Lines ripping towards his under. So that's a really sharp bet that we can go with on parlay play. And again, only a max bet size of $60 on this platform. So this is what I'll go with. $60 max bet size, $5,000 profit. Just following the data, never betting with my gut. Pretty easy. 49K, you know, 20% ROI, $5,000 profit on roughly 25K bet. And they always have these random bonuses. It's like every Friday, you put in 250, you get 50 for free. So I recommend having this book. It's a good book to have. My refer friend code is Alex M, just Alex like my name, and then M, like my last name. A lot of good bets here. So, okay, I mean, this play on Stroud is fucking insane, right? Like, we just got all excited about this prize picks promo for, you know, a 30-yard discount on Caleb Williams. Here's a 20-yard discount on C.J. Stroud. It's like, I have no idea what they're doing with his line at 244 and a half. That's crazy. Um... But hey, I mean, we'll take it. I'm not complaining. That's for sure. But again, what's hard about these platforms is you need six picks, right? On parlay play, we really want to be going with six pick entries. I have some articles, some videos on the Odds Jam YouTube just kind of breaking that down. But like if you look at them, you know, they only give you a 5x payout for three pick entries, which sucks. You look at prize picks or underdog fantasy, I apologize. They give you 6X. So parlay plays are ripping you off for these three pick entries. So it's really important to know like, okay, like, you know, how many picks should I be going with on each platform? But anyways, let's go over to prize picks. And we can see if there's anything new. We got some good plays. Cooper Cup, no touchdown. But sometimes, you know, new value springs up then we want to take advantage so we can go here and we can like refresh this, see if there's anything. We already got this play. We already got this play. You could arbitrage bet it, make a risk-free profit. We went through all that crap. Ooh, here is a play though. So just like um, if you take a look here, you know, it's like, do they post here? NHL lineups, maybe they don't. Um... Do they do college football? Let's see. Nope, doesn't look like they do. So just like alerts, lineup news, like all that stuff moves around the lines. And it's pretty useful to follow, especially in the NBA. Like, you know, I explained the last season, especially like during the NBA season, you will see a lot of good bets. I mean, obviously it's the off season right now, but Reeves, I mean, this is just like contract shit. But once you get back to the actual season, you know, you'll see like stuff like this. Tyler Hero is going to play. That affects Jimmy Butler's line, the money line, the spread, the total. That affects Gabe Vincent's line. How many minutes is Gabe Vincent, Max Struess going to get? Like all that shit moves when stuff like this comes out. 
and there's good betting opportunities again, because the market's super fragmented and all these books set lines independently. So what we can do is we can go over here and we can look for some plays on underdog and you can see there's some bets on FanDuel Vikings first quarter money line. There's a lot of good promos on FanDuel. I tweeted out a lot of them, but take a look at this Chubba over and rushing attempts. Again, underdog fantasy, you know, just like prize picks, they don't change your payout. And we hit yesterday on underdog fantasy, much needed. And we want Hubbard over and rushing attempts. Underdog fantasy, they don't change your payout based on you selecting over, under. All the sports books have is over heavily favored. So that's a great bet, right? That's a great play that we can go with on underdog fantasy. And you can like, you know, automatically receive new bets without refreshing. You can do all that crap. Trevor Lawrence. So let's make sure it's sharing. So let me reshare my screen. I'm not sure if it was sharing. Trevor Lawrence, heavily favored to go over. Okay, that's a good pick to go with. But, or actually, so we can go here and we can go here. I mean, there's a bunch of different books we can look at. Underdog Fantasy is the platform I've had personally the most success on this year, at least. Um, and damn, they have a lot of bets. So like Justin Fields, Underdog has him at 10 rushing attempts, prize picks at nine and a half. Like that's the type of shit we want to be alerted to. Like if you look at Chubba's line, he's three and a half receptions there. Dougie Hamilton, they just bumped him down. You know, his, nope, well. But what's a good example? Is like, if we go here to like, you know, Mark Andrews, if we look at underdog fantasy, you know, they have his line at four and a half. Prize picks has his line at four and a half. All the sports books probably have his line at four and a half. There's no value. Like, we don't care about that shit. We just want to see the plays. Yo, where's there like, you know, big discrepancies in the market? Fliff just moved this play on Hearst a little bit. You could still orbit with bet online. Make a risk-free profit if you wanted to, but let's go here. And let's try to find some plays. So, damn, like, look at this. I mean, this is just like, I mean, again, you're going to need multiple sports books if you want to do stuff like this. But look at this player, Fallen. Like, it's fucking crazy. His line is 13 and a half. Nope. Where's esports? Okay. CSGO. Well, let's take a look here. I don't know if I'm spelling that right. So Skull's line is 20 and a half headshots there on hot streak. If you take a look at prize picks... They have him at, where is his line? 19 kills, 36 versus 38 and a half. So there's some pretty big discrepancies in the market that you could middle bet. But anyways, let's get through some of these plays on underdog. So the first play that looks really good is Tenones, right? Over five and a half. I think he hooked us last time, but... We want to take him over five and a half, and it's like, okay, what's the data showing? And again, you may be like, again, I don't like, you're not going to create better projections than prize picks, most likely. And even if you could, prize picks, even if you have some supercomputer, right, that, you know, prize picks is still going to limit, like, it's not worth it. You can make such easy money just like following data. Even if you wanted to hire a team of quants to create better esports projections, it's like, why do it? Un Prize picks has his line at six. Hot Streak has his line at six and a half with the over favored. So this is League of Legends. They have his line at six and a half with the over favored. So again, I'm not sure why they put their odds in payout or decimal format, but 1.56 just means um, minus 182 odds. So it's like that play seems crazy good. 
This play seems crazy good. Underdog has his line at four and a half. Prize picks has his line at five. Hot streak has his line higher and heavily juiced. It's like a lot of overs, but if that's where the value is, that's what we'll be betting. I mean, like, just crazy. So maybe we lock in this play first. So here we have a four pick entry. Four pick entries you want to play with insurance. And these assholes already moved it. So let's refresh this. Oh, baby. One sec. So it looks like they just added a promo too. Um, so anyways, they removed this play on Hemian. So you may be like, ah, they moved it on us which does suck, but what we can do is we can go here and fuck, they moved the other play on Tanones. So I'm going to lock in this play with Sean very quickly. Man, they're fucking bumping everything. Fuck, I didn't want to play it with insurance though. You don't want to play three pick entries with insurance, but I did. And unfortunately, underdog fantasy, there's no immediate way to cancel, but I did not want to play this with insurance. Regardless, the picks are... Regardless, the picks are really good. I mean, sometimes when I'm trying to move quickly, when they're bumping all this crap on me, I screw it up. But if you look here, it's like, what are they doing? They have his line at seven, jock market eight and a half, parlay play eight, seven and a half, prize pick seven and a half, hot streak eight and a half. This play is definitely still good with insurance, but you don't want to include insurance. It's not optimal. But anyways, what's this promo? So this is a payout boost. So they have a nice little payout boost. So what you want to do, though, is we want to see like, okay, like Terry, should we take him over or under? All the other books have his line at 51 and a half. Eh, all these books are roughly the same. So what I'm going to do is like, we can also just, so there's really no value on underdog for his over or his under, it looks like. Just kind of, they're right in line with the market. Sam Howell, they're at 239 half, right in line with the market. Hot Streak has them 245 half. Prize picks a little higher. So what we could do is take both of their overs, positive correlation. And I don't want to really do, I don't, like, underdog fantasy, they only let me include a player once and only for a max of $100. Bo Nix over 17 and a half rushing yards. FanDuel has him at 24 and a half higher. But you'll see, like, they're going to tell me, oh, you've already bet on Bo Nix. Or no, they actually took this bet. So there we go. We got to play it. So this will be my underdog fantasy promo. Positive correlation, 8x payout. Usually they give you a 6x payout, right? So now with the promo, we're getting 8x. So it's like, fuck yeah, we're getting an 8x payout. So they put our boy Hemian back, it looks like. So if we refresh this, they put him back at four and a half. No insurance if we play a three-pick entry. And I apologize again. I mean, these plays are clear as day. Like, there's a lot of plays. You look at this play, Robo. Where does Hot Streak have his line? You know, it's just about the data. You know, they have his line at six and a half. And a lot of people try to find one pick a day. They have his line at six and a half. Underdog Fantasy six, like every other book higher. A lot of people only want to place one bet a day. But it's like Underdog Fantasy limits me to a $100 max bet size. I need to be able to find plays with an edge quickly and lock them in quickly. Otherwise, it's not worth the fucking time, right? Like... Even if I had could see the future and get like a 30% ROI on underdog only for one bet a day, I wouldn't do it because that means I'd make $30 a day on underdog, one bet a day for a hundred bucks. Like when you have an edge, you make money by placing a lot of bets. So these arbitrage bets, these risk-free money bets like this one on Hayden Hurst, a lot of people say shit like, oh, you're only making $12 risk-free. What's the point? It's like you're making $12 for 20 seconds of work 
And then you go do it with another bet, another bet, another bet, another bet. And pretty soon you made a few hundred bucks, a thousand bucks, 2000 bucks, right? You hit this one. You're already logged in to bet online and fliff, then hit this one, then hit this one. You're already in bet online, log into FanDuel. Next thing you know, you're at $25 risk-free profit. So you can see here, not a ton of arbitrage plays. I hit some this morning. There's some between Fluff and Bet Online, which look pretty good. And you got to remember, like the power of sports betting is you're generally, generally betting on games that are that day, right? So, you know, when we bet this arbitrage bet on Alex Ovechkin, like we're betting whatever, we make a risk-free $4, we get our money back today. So the power of sports betting is your ROI is daily. Like even if you could earn just a 2% ROI betting on the MLB, you know, what does that add up to over the course of a month or over the season? 2% ROI, there's 162 games in the regular season, right? Let's say there's 200 total days of baseball, you know, that's a 400% ROI. So we cleared out a lot of the value on underdog. Could go back to parlay play, oh, anything new, whatever. Not really. We cleared out a lot of the value. And then we can go back to prize picks, oh, anything new. Not really. Some decent line discrepancies, but... Nothing really new worth talking about. So we'll call it a day for now. Hopefully this live stream was helpful. Thanks so much.